2002, Porsche did something that led to heated discussions even within the company. It built an SUV. Today, we know that this decision was absolutely right. Over the past 15 years, 770,000 Cayennes have been sold, opening the door to many new markets for Porsche and driving growth. At the heart of it, the Cayenne has always been a high-performance all-rounder. But even as a spacious all-terrain family car, it's always remained a genuine Porsche. The third generation has been developed completely from scratch, and it's become noticeably better in every respect. More than ever, the Cayenne combines luxurious comfort with top performance, and of course, with a typical Porsche design. If we go through the car, starting from the front, the wings have become a little more pronounced when viewed from the front, also as regards the shape of the headlights. Looking inside the headlight unit, you see that it is maximally modelled in three dimensions. The large air inlet vents, which are typical of a Porsche, are of course there for technical reasons, but they're also upgraded by very beautiful fine details such as these fins, which are functional too, of course. This is the new wind tunnel at Porsche's development center in Weissach. We use the smoke rod in order to see the air current. We can see very nicely how the air flows underneath the vehicle and whether it comes out along the wheels. We can see whether the airstream passes smoothly along the body and whether air is flowing over the rooftop spoiler. That is true especially of the turbo model, which is fitted with a multifunctional active roof spoiler. We have lowered the back of the roof a little in the region around the spoiler, so as to guide the airflow downwards and reduce air resistance. This increases the lift acting on the rear axle, in other words, the vertical forces on the car. To get this under control again, we fitted an active roof spoiler which is extended at speeds above 160 km per hour, adjusting the lift acting on the rear axle to the range that we need it to be for the road holding we're after, so that the car remains safe at high speeds. We've tested the vehicle at speeds of up to 300 km per hour. We do this to check whether the active components in particular work properly up to that speed, to make sure that the aerodynamic characteristics are suitable even at high speeds, and that the vehicle can drive safely on the road at high speeds too. The previous model already had a very dynamic roofline, in my opinion. But we've done some more work specifically on this line, as well as on the outline of the side windows. We now have a markedly flatter roofline, which makes the vehicle sportier. We have also designed a very beautiful dynamic outline for the side windows, making it look even more like a sports car. Looking from the rear, we have Porsche's typical brand identity. The cockpit is drawn inwards. We have these shoulders. In purely stylistic terms, the ribbon of the rear lights help us to distribute the volume better. The car looks distinctly more lightweight. The story behind this is simply that we introduced the ribbon to the sports car as a new element. And this design element was then consecrated and became part of the Porsche brand identity. The Cayenne's digital Porsche Advanced cockpit takes the philosophy that's traditionally characterized Porsche's displays and controls forward into the future. It's embedded in sporty, luxury surroundings, referencing the design of its predecessors and using new materials of the highest quality. Here again, it was an important step to move forward into the modern age. That is to say, we now have a large center screen. The display has become distinctly larger, and it also adopts the idea of touch-sensitive surfaces. We also try to give the driver and passenger the sense of really becoming a part of this machine. One example of this is the upward sloping center console. The fact that the instrument, as we call it, is slightly curved. That's one of the themes that keep repeating throughout all our model ranges. 
It is certainly an inspiration for us, making the existing elements of the car even more typical of Porsche in the next generation. And we have tried to make things much cleaner, to tidy things up, to produce a calmer interior in which you can concentrate. Well, first of all on the road, of course, but also on the beautiful materials, the gracefulness. We also use very high quality materials, of course. For example, in terms of the types of leather we offer, including top class leather of club quality. Take a sport seat like this, for example, which has turned out very beautifully. A top class seat. It looks very sportive, with its pronounced shoulders and the integrated headrest. Another typical Porsche feature. As a comfortable all-rounder, the Cayenne now offers even more room for up to five passengers and lots of luggage. Up to 100 litres more storage space are now available compared with its predecessor. The position of the rear split seat can be individually adjusted. The Cayenne brings with it a completely new range of engines. The turbo drives with six or eight cylinders combine smaller engine capacities with greater power and more torque than the respective previous models. Every new Porsche needs to be better than its predecessor, especially when it comes to road handling. So we've increased the performance even further. Of course, another important issue is to further reduce the fuel consumption significantly. We have developed an entirely new generation of engines for the Cayenne, consisting of six and eight cylinder units. Particularly the Cayenne with the three litre turbo engine has been designed entirely from scratch. It can draw on 340 horsepower to provide a torque of 450 newton meters. One of the main features of this power unit is the HSI concept, the so-called hot side-in arrangement, in which the entire exhaust manifold and the turbocharger are situated in the inner V of the unit. This leads to a considerably more compact design, as well as faster response times and lower fuel consumption. The KNS is also being fitted with a six-cylinder engine, producing 440 horsepower and a torque of 550 newton meters. Here we have further increased the power by means of an additional turbocharger. It's a twin turbocharged engine. This leads to higher pressures and to a higher compression, which meant we had to make the engine stiffer. Among other things, the crankshaft has been stiffened, as well as the pistons and the piston rods, which has reduced the engine capacity to 2.9 litres. Nevertheless, we've achieved substantial levels of power and torque. The new V8 turbo engine will have a capacity of 4 litres, generating 550 horsepower and a torque of 770 newton meters. Here we've resorted to innovative manufacturing techniques. We use atmospheric plasma injection to produce an iron coated track on the sliding surface of the cylinder. This has made the unit markedly sturdier, while at the same time being approximately 7 kilograms lighter than the previous version, thanks to the latest manufacturing techniques. Another highlight of this power unit is that we're using so-called twin scroll chargers in the inner V of the twin turbochargers, which rotate in opposite senses to each other. This way we've managed to achieve a very high torque, even at low revs. with a very fast and direct response and in a very small amount of space. We're continuing to offer three modes, normal, sport and sport plus. In terms of the drive system, we vary the characteristics of the accelerator, the timing of the gear changes, the time taken to change and also the load reversal damping. In other words, the direct feedback to the driver. This means the driver is free to choose between comfortable, normal operation, all the way to extremely sporty, dynamic driving characteristics, depending on his or her personal preference.
The sport response button ensures that for 20 seconds the driver can tap into the maximum power, making available maximum performance with maximum sportiness. For example, when you spontaneously decide to overtake. Another factor contributing to the improved performance is the new 8-gear Tiptronic S gearbox. In contrast to the previous gearbox, we have substantially reduced the shifting times. Gears are now changed almost without any interruption. When manoeuvring and when setting off, there's no jolting during gear changes. Using this torque converter transmission, we have also succeeded in pulling very heavy loads. There are not many vehicles that can pull a load of 3.5 tons. This is one of the many big advantages of the torque converter. The chassis has been designed from scratch and is pushing the boundary between sportiness and comfort outwards even further. Like the 911, the Cayenne is now fitted with mixed tyres and optional rear wheel steering. On top of this, it has three-chamber air suspension, newly developed brakes and the active roll stabilisation Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. PDCC has been further improved by switching from electro-hydraulic to electro-mechanical operation. The new system uses 48-volt technology and is able to change the torsional stiffness of the stabilizers on the front and rear axles within milliseconds, thereby actively stabilizing the car. The Cayenne is and will remain the sports car in its market segment. Naturally, we need to keep underpinning this. The biggest changes have been to the chassis. The Cayenne has always been distinguished by the spread between sportiness and comfort, and we've set the bar even higher in this respect with the new Cayenne. All these electronic suspension systems are interlinked with one another. We refer to this as 4D chassis control, which you will already be familiar with from the Panamera. We've addressed the issue of comfort with the entirely new developed air suspension. We use three air chambers, meaning we have more chambers and can therefore provide a greater level of comfort. These air chambers are linked by valves which can be opened or closed, depending on road conditions, using the maximum volume in the comfort setting and only relying on one chamber in the Sport Plus mode. On the other hand, this means we can also offer greater sportiness. At the press of a button, the Cayenne becomes considerably stiffer, very sporty, and we round off the whole picture using a further element from the 911, rear axle steering. This leads to further improvements in everyday usability. At lower speeds, you have a smaller turning radius, which makes it easier to park in a city, for example. And at higher speeds, it gives the Cayenne greater stability on the road. The big new highlight is our new PSCB, the Porsche Surface Coated Brake, which is a standard feature of the Cayenne Turbo. The advantage of this hard tungsten coating on the brakes is that it reduces wear. The brake disc wears down less, and as a result, there is less brake dust. The Cayenne cuts a very good figure off-road too. Its all-terrain capabilities have always played a key role during its development. The third generation Cayenne will be a worthy match for its predecessors in this respect. The active hang-on four-wheel drive, Porsche traction management, which is now a standard feature of all the models, distributes the propulsive force between the front and rear axle adaptively 
and variably, with a ground clearance of 240 millimeters, a ramp angle of over 21 degrees, and a fording depth of 525 millimeters. The Cayenne is perfectly equipped for demanding cross-country trips. On top of this, the new off-road modes allow all the drive and suspension systems to be used optimally, depending on the situation. Assistance systems are important because traffic density is constantly increasing all over the world. So for us, it's a matter of taking some of the burden off the driver in situations that lead to stress. For example, driving in congested traffic. On the other hand, it's also a matter of preventing accidents. And this too can be achieved by assistance systems. Our philosophy is always to support the driver, but not to be patronizing. New functions, new services, and new apps. Porsche is taking vehicle connectivity to a new level with Porsche Connect Plus. The system is a standard feature of the new Cayenne and includes such things as an LTE phone module with integrated SIM card, online navigation system including real-time traffic updates, and an intelligent online voice control system. The voice pilot not only allows you to control the navigation system, but also the infotainment system, the air conditioning, and the heated seats. Getting into the new Cayenne, you immediately see the central 12.3-inch display in the middle. That makes it easier to operate, of course. The combination instrument has an analog rev counter in the center, as always in a Porsche. But in addition, there are two 7-inch TFT displays, which provide all the relevant information and which are also able to control all the relevant functions of the car. Our aim was not to develop an iPad on wheels. That would not fit our philosophy, but the focus was very much on intuitive operation. Sports car, off-road vehicle, touring saloon. The new Cayenne is all these things. The third generation intends to continue the success story. It's expanding the spread between dynamics and comfort even further in all terrains.